Hey everyone, this is Nathan Williams with BlackRain79.com and I'm back here with another hand history review for you guys. So something that uh, people ask me all the time is should you ever fold King's preflop, especially in a small stakes cash game? Um, so I think this hand is a perfect example of perhaps if we should or we shouldn't. Um, this hand was sent to me by Lars from Denmark. As you can see, it was played at the 5 cent, 10 cent uh, zoom tables on poker stars uh, and this is also a full ring game there's nine players at the table so let's jump right into the action so once again Lars has the old pocket cowboys pocket kings and he opens under the gun uh, he's got a hundred big blinds mostly everybody else at the table there's one or two kind of half stacks but most other players at the table are also a hundred big blinds or more so he opens for three times the size of the big blind under the gun to 30 cents and immediately, villain four in his left repops three times the raise to 90 cents. Um, and actually, I should mention right off the top here, this is, once again, as I mentioned, this is Zoom poker. So um, as I've talked about many times, it's difficult to get reads at Zoom. It's one of the, the disadvantages of playing Zoom is it's harder to get reads on people because you just, the player pool is so big, you don't um, get to play with them as often. So even if you're using a HUD, um, you just don't get the amount of data that you do like at a regular table. So um, Lars essentially didn't really have any reads in this situation. So we're kind of going to just be playing this hand blind. We're just assuming everyone is an unknown. So like I said, Villain 4 uh, immediately three bets there. And Villain 5 then comes in for the, uh, what is that, about a three and a half times uh, four bet. Like a, a cold four bet. So this is just unbelievably crazy action. And the other thing to note here is this is all in early position. This is full ring early position, right? So... Uh, let's just see the rest of the rest of the table just folds. Um, so the, the action is back on Lars here. So the question that we started off here, should you ever fold Kings preflop in a cash game? I would say that uh, you can do it in a full ring cash game. Um, nine players full ring cash game. In a six max game these days, I'm pretty hesitant to ever fold pocket Kings preflop for 100 big blinds or less. Um, but I think that if there was a situation to ever fold Kings preflop, uh, it would be in a, in a full ring game like this when the action is this crazy. And so there's a lot of different things going on in this hand. Number one, as I, as I talked about, the, all the action here is, is in early position. Now, if you guys have read my books or, or read my blog posts, you know that I'm always talking about how position is so important in poker and to understand how it completely changes the dynamic of the hand. When you've got a crazy like raise, re-raise war like this in early position, it is light years different then when somebody raises on the button and then the small blind repops and then the big blind repops, you know, it's just completely different because in a situation like that, it is assumed that the button is stealing and then the small blind's like, well, I know he's stealing, so I'll repop him light. And then the big blind, if he's super clever, he's like, well, I know that the button's stealing light. The big, the, the small blind is repopping him light. So I'm just going to four bet light and you understand what I'm saying. But in a situation like this, when all the action is is under the gun, under the gun plus one, and under the gun plus two, all early position, there's no way anybody is screwing around because you have the entire table still left to act, right? So, so I'm going to say if there was one situation where I would ever consider folding uh, Pocket Kings preflop, this would be one of them. So once again, uh, huge, crazy, crazy action. Uh, and it's all in early position. Now, of course, it, it always makes things difficult when you're up against unknown players because you don't know anything about them. Of course, uh, this would be a much, much easier laydown if I knew that both of these players were 10-8s, for instance. Those are HUD stats, by the way, uh, indicating a very nitty player. Now, of course, we don't know that in this situation. But once again, this is just sort of the strongest uh, possible action that, you, that can possibly be taken in a full ring cash game or any cash game, really, because... Uh, again, it, it's a, it's a, it, all the action is, is in the first couple seats um, where players are supposed to have their, or are typically going to have their tightest ranges. Um, and we've got a three bet and then a cold four bet. And the other thing to note here is we're playing low stakes, as I talked about before. And it's important to remember that players at the lower stakes, um, a lot of people confuse this and think that there's a lot of wild, crazy action and stuff. There is, but usually it's bad players calling too much. It's not going for wild, crazy bluffs like this. Typically, when somebody is three betting or four bet, especially a cold four bet like we see here from Villain Five, um, 
that almost always means something very, very strong. So yeah, you just, so basically you just don't see a whole lot of guys screwing around at the lower stakes like this. But anyways, those are kind of my thoughts on the hand so far. Let's, uh, let's play out the action and see what actually happens. So Lars does decide to make the call here and, you know, you can't really blame him. It's, uh, you know, you've got pocket kings. It's, it's very, very difficult to get away. And I want to talk one other thing before we just get, I know you guys want to see the results, but one other thing that I want to mention just before I get to the results here is you guys need to understand that even if you never, ever get away from pocket kings, I'm talking about 100 big blinds or less, by the way. I'm not talking about 200 big blinds, 300 big blinds. That is a totally different story. You do absolutely need to be able to get away from pocket kings when you've got 200 big blinds, 300 big blinds, and so on. But for 100 big blinds or less, if you never get away from them pre-flop or even after the flop, like on good flops, you're not making a huge mistake because the chances are very high that there's very few of your opponents at these stakes that are going to get away either. So it's essentially just going to be a wash in the long run. Um, so I just want to make that point clear that even if we're up against aces here, I'm going to see in a sec, um, it's still, it's never a major mistake to, to just go broke with Kings, uh, prefab. We're talking about trying to gain a very, very small edge here in trying to find a very small amount of the time we can possibly get away from Kings when, when it's, when we feel that there's a solid chance that we're up against aces. So anyways, um, the villain four decides to fold. And, um, so we're just going to go see a flop now. Uh, obviously a very, very good flop for uh, any kind of over pair here. Um, Puck Kings, of course. Um, is is looking pretty good on this board uh, five two three. So Lars decides to go for the check. Um, I think that's clearly the correct play. I can't see any reason to ever bet here because I want to. Um, if if on the off chance he's got an ace king or an ace queen, I want him to be able to jam on this board and or just make his bluff. Or if he's somehow bluffing with even something like a suited connector. Again, I don't think it's likely to ever be happening really at these stakes with these these kind of players. I don't think they're ever bluffing with a cold four bet like that. But um, I, you always want to give them the chance to, to hang themselves, give them a rope here. There's no reason why we should ever, ever bet out because it just takes away his ability to bluff. So Lars, uh, correctly in my uh, mind, uh, checks. And Villain 5 decides to go all in. You know, we call the 4-bet pre-flop, um, and then you get this kind of flop. I don't think there's any way you can possibly fold here. Uh, so Lars makes the call, and we'll see how that plays out. And Villain 5 does, in fact, have the pocket aces. So uh, make sure you guys let me know what you think of this hand. Um, let me know in the comments. Do you guys ever get away from Kings preflop? Uh, for and again, I want to make I want to be very clear. Here. I'm talking about 100 big blinds or less. Um, well, 100 big blinds. I'm essentially talking about because I that's what I always recommend buying in for. It's the maximum stack size in most online cash cams. I'm not talking about 200 big blinds or deeper here because that is a totally different game when we're talking about deep stack poker. I'm talking about 100 big blinds here. Uh, Lars started the hand with $10, the NL10 game, 100 big blinds. Um, so let me know your guys' thoughts uh, below. Do you guys ever get away from pocket kings in, in a cash game for 100 big blinds? Um, I would say that if there is one situation where you can gain a small edge at these stakes and get away from it, it would be exactly this. This is a full ring game. Again, in a six max game, I think you should honestly pretty much just go broke for 100 big blinds pre-flop all the time. But in a full ring game like this, where you open under the gun, you get crazy, crazy action right to the, the seats to the left of you for all the reasons I talked about before, um, about players have their strongest ranges, about how uh, micro stakes players are, are, are not uh, bluffing nearly as much as you think when they're coming in for these crazy raises and re-raises. I think that this is probably a spot where majority of the time you're going to be running into aces here always hate to make a fold when we're when we're just when we're putting them on one specific hand but again this is uh full ring it can happen i think it's about four percent of the time when you have kings in a full ring game uh that somebody's gonna have aces so um but really it's just about the action in this hand is the biggest thing for me all the action is is uh an early position anyways um let me know your thoughts below uh if you guys like videos seeing videos like this make sure you give it a thumbs up make sure you subscribe to this channel as well if you want to see more hand history reviews like this and lastly make sure you check out my free poker cheat sheet guide below it's called massive profit the micros give you my complete strategy on how i beat these stakes Thanks a lot for watching, guys. It's been Nathan Williams with BlackRain79.com.